we welcome everyone that's here tonight. And this meeting tonight, we will be reviewing school facilities needs in Curry Tech County, as well as improvement projects and other items. I'd like to turn the meeting over to our superintendent, Dr. Matt Luth. Could, could I just really quick interject, Mr. Luth? Um, just to make sure everyone, um, this is being recorded, so if you could make sure that your mics are always on, don't mute them if you have a mute button, just so everything can be picked up, because we got to share mics a little bit, so thank you. Sorry about that. No problem. <coughs> well, it's, it's great to get our boards together again. Uh, we've done pretty well trying to stay on somewhat of a quarterly basis to keep up with the uh, needs and keep a, an open dialogue going over the needs of our county. I, uh, I again, appreciate the, us coming together. So we need to uh, take a look tonight um, at our last meeting in late October. There was discussion regarding um, what are we going to do in terms of the growth. We have a plan currently for our Melioc Elementary School. We're at an expansion project there. That building will be moving to 750 seats. We also have an expansion project in Mayock Middle School. That's gonna push up to around 800 seats in that building. And of course, we have a, a we are in the process of a new build off of Tall's Creek Road and an elementary building yet to be named, um, which we are anticipating to house about 750 students. I do wanna bring up that in the past, we've talked about uh, possibly a, needing a second new elementary school and a new middle school at the same time. When we uh, went back and reviewed our, the, the numbers that came from the RAD study and we went back through our, our notes, I went back to our, some of our early discussions all the way back to July of 2020 when we had talked about the need for two new elementary schools. At that point in time, we had not talked about an expansion at Melioc Elementary. That expansion at Melioc Elementary adds an extra 250 seats along with the new elementary school at 750. We do not project a need for a new elementary school to around 2030. So we're gonna pull that part of the discussion out and focus on our other needs that our uh, consultant Jim Cosby is gonna talk about as he walks through some questions. But I did wanna get that out there that we had spoken often of a need for a, a second new elementary school, but that addition at Mayock Elementary School will allow us not to to need a new elementary school, um, at least or not within the next five years, based on the projections. So at this point in time, I'd like to turn the meeting over to Jim Cosby. Jim's gonna head on up there. Uh, Jim comes to us with uh, a great deal of experience. I'm sure he's gonna touch on it. Um, went through, talked to numerous people, and um, Jim came to us highly recommended with the tremendous amount of experience in building schools and growth and his resume uh, speaks for itself. Um, he has done just about everything you can do in this state and we are very pleased that he journeyed across the state to join us here this evening. So thanks for being here, Jim. Thanks for those kind comments. If my wife were here, she would appreciate them. <laughs> <laughs> and if my mother, God rest her soul, were here, she'd believe them. So <laughs> it is, it is great, to, great to be with you. And it's always wonderful in any situation where two boards can get a chance to have a meal together and interact together. And this is just a great opportunity. I so appreciate you allowing me to be a piece of it. <clears throat> this COVID situation has caused all of us to live a little bit differently. I want you to know that of all the meetings I've had for about the last two years, this is the first one I've wore pants for. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> most of it was on the screen and it was just a, and I'd come out with a, polo shirt on my wife said you got a meeting today don't you <laughs> so, yes I do so that that was that was a lot of fun but it is nice to to see folks who are smiling now all of you smile because we're, we're here just to talk about things and share some information I'm not here to try to sell you on anything I'm here to share information and tell you what I have found from looking at your information and to talk about potential options after that you two boards have to make your decisions on where you want to go uh, my, my job is not to convince you one way or the other, it's to share information with you. I uh, had the great pleasure of meeting with the, your, your chair and vice chair recently, virtually, and, and I recognized them when I got here. They looked just like they did on television. Oh, so, so, so that's not bad. But uh, the, the COVID situation, I've, I've done a lot of things. And it's been really hard on folks who are supposed to go around and do meetings and speak and those kind of, because some of that's dried up. 
Uh, it's also interesting. One of the things that I've done a lot in the last few years is uh, interim superintendent jobs. <clears throat> uh, that's where you go in and work. They say, be, be there three, three weeks or three months while we get a new superintendent. And uh, I had one that they said three months, and I ended up being there 18 months. So you never know exactly what you're going to run into. But the last two that I've done have been in during the COVID. And I, man, I admire anyone who's run a school system doing that. Uh, it's, it was not, not easy. Almost no decision you made pleased anybody because everyone believes the way they do and they believe adamantly the way they do. And, and it almost has gotten to the point that we can't get along with each other otherwise. And I'm, I'm sure that's not happened here, but it has happened some places. So it's been a little depressing in some, some situations. <clears throat> and I, f I found myself not getting depressed with all of it, but, but thinking differently. Because when you get up and you're with your wife all day, every day, you know, you can't, you don't get out and go. It, it, it bothers you. And I'm getting kind of old, Bill. <laughs> now, Bill and I go way back together, so I know some secrets on him if you want to know anything. <laughs> but uh, I will, I've got a birthday coming up. And I'll be 76 years old. Now, I know I don't look it. <laughs> Somebody say that, please. You don't look it. <laughs> But I was feeling kind of depressed about it, and I was trying to get something to rev me up a little bit. And I always count on my wife to do that. And we, June the 1st, we'll be married 54 years. Seems like 154. <laughs> but uh, when I asked, I said, I said, I don't really look like I'm going to be 76 years old, do I? And she looked up as sweet as she could, and she said, no, you don't. She said, but I remember when you did. <laughs> so, no, no support whatsoever. But then she got to thinking that maybe she had said the wrong thing. And she said, but honey, see, you're about the same age as Donald Trump. And you're about the same age as Hillary Clinton. And you're younger than Joe Biden. And you got better hair than all three of them. <laughs> so she cheered me up just, just a little bit from that. The joke's, joke's out of the way now. We'll get, 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 get serious. What, what is my, my role in this? <clears throat> my role in this is to look at information, to share my thoughts with the school board about what that means, and I've done that, and I've shared some with, with the commissioners also, to look at options, and I've, I've dealt with all kinds of situations. I've uh, been superintendent in eight different times, two of those times in the same systems two systems twice and have have dealt with bond issues and those kind of things since the 80s I've never lost a bond issue that I ran I've served as consultant on a number of them I did lose two of those and both of those were because they did things differently than what what they should have done but that that's beside the point and I'm going to look at some bond information even just just a little bit but it's not my role to take all of that and try to convince you about bonds. Bonds are one way of going. There are other ways also of going if that suits your situation better. And different counties do things differently depending on what they can, they can afford at the time. But what, what I'd like for you to look at first is the out of capacity chart. Now I want to commend you and I want to commend your Board of Education because you have done the right things in getting the kind of information that you need to make decisions. Uh, I have worked with many systems where you go in and you start asking information, they don't have much. So you have to say, well, how about doing this and do that? But that's not, not your situation. You, you've done a lot. And I also commend your board of commissioners because you've taken actions to help meet the needs of your school system. You know, it's rare that I go into a situation where commissioners have already funded a new elementary school, additions to an elementary school, and additions to a middle school. You are to be commended for doing that. And uh, that takes, sometimes it takes nerve to spend money. Uh, sometimes they're, they're political decisions and they're not easy. And please understand that I know and appreciate the politics that both of you deal with. Okay? I would not be a school board member. I would not be a county commissioner. Because no matter what you do, there's somebody, <laughs> I see you laughing, you know what I'm talking about because you deal with it every day. And COVID, I'm sure, has made it even worse. You know, 
with all the things that you have to decide. But what I hope to get to the point of the time you leave here and understand is that you, your two boards <clears throat> have very specific responsibilities. They're different, but they're complementary. Okay. But, but your focus is different. The school board's focus is on schools and on finding the very best program they can for kids. But they have no authority in North Carolina to raise money. And that's very different. In most states, school boards have taxing authority, not in North Carolina. And not likelihood that's going to change any time in North Carolina, because it's been talked about for a long time with never, never much traction gained to it. So they have to come to you to ask for money and funding. You as the Board of Commissioners, you've got mm, everything in the county to worry about. Schools are just a piece of it, an important piece of it, and I know all of you realize that, a very important piece of it. But you have to look at that whole pot and see how you divide it out and where you put it and what you do with it and set priorities. And then sometimes that's difficult. To see what you've done already with that it is, is very, very remarkable. And I don't just give out this kind of – it's rare that I give these kind of compliments out when – speaking to a group like this. But each of you need to know that. But both of your roles, if you look at the North Carolina Constitution, neither one of you are in it. Yeah. There's language in there about a state superintendent, and there's language in there about a state board of education. But there's no language about board of commissioners or board of education. You both are creations of the legislature. And when they created it, they wrote laws. And some of those laws are by stupid, you know, not just in that area, but in lots of areas. But what they created a real adversarial relationship when that's probably the worst thing in the world to have because you've got the school board that's got to provide the very best they can, but they can't fund it. You've got the board of commissioners that have to fund it to some degree, but they don't have much say so over how that money's spent. And so every year, it's, and it's not just here. It's everywhere in North Carolina. All 100 counties, that happens. So it's not unique to you. It happens everywhere. So hopefully, what I can leave with you, if nothing else tonight, is that you've got to work together jointly to cover each other's back and to help each other out. Okay? There is a way to make everyone look good. There is a way to work the politics for everybody. And this is to get a meeting like this initially is amazing also. This just does not happen in many counties. And you need to know that, man. It just doesn't. Someone works hard to get this meeting together. But uh, I'm delighted to be a piece of it. But you have two, two really important pieces of information, and I want to talk about them. You have an architectural firm, Height Architects, <clears throat> who has done a very complete study of your school facilities. And one of the most detailed studies I've seen is to every thing in them that needs to be dealt with, facilities-wise. That was done, I believe, in October, so it's fairly recent and very much up to date. Uh, Height Architects firm is a very, very good firm, one that I highly uh, look up to and appreciate. I've worked with them on a lot of projects. Or Ed out of North Carolina State University have been doing these kind of studies since the, the 80s. I worked with them in Johnston County. I've superintendent there for 10 years. We grew from that 10 years from about 14,000 kids to 25,000 kids. And during that 10-year period, their estimates, predictions of numbers of kids was only off about 100 kids out of 25,000. That's how accurate they are. Okay. You, need, you need to know that. They've got, the, they've got the way to do it. They've got the algorithms. It's done in a very accurate way. So you've gotten good information. I don't want you to question the information. You can wish it was some other way, but the information is, is pretty correct. Now, could this change? Certainly. You know, we're dealing with things right now that are unique. Who knows what the pandemic is going to cause? Who, know, who knows what the inflation is going to cause? Uh, who knows what's that going to do to building out of the developments that have been approved. All those kind of things are unknowns. But if they happen normally, this information is good information, and that's the best you have to go on, and what, what, you, what may happen with it. The other thing I want you 
talk about you also is I understand there's been some questioning about capacities of buildings. And it, you really need to know that you've got the right information as to what a building will handle as you look at your needs. You don't want to build space you don't need, but you don't want to not build space you do need. Okay? If you look at those, they're probably different than some numbers you've seen in some other reports. <clears throat> there have been a, there's two, every 10 years, school systems have to do a facilities report to the state. It goes from the school board to the board of commissioners onto the state. And that will have capacities listed in it. Let me tell you about those 10-year studies. They're not really much worth the paper they're written on because it goes through a political process. If the school board comes and says, we need three new elementary schools and we need two middle schools, commissioners will normally say, we're not signing off on that. You know, that means we'll have to do it. So there gets some changes get made and things get adjusted, and that happens all across North Carolina. But it just gives a good and the figure so big to begin with, it doesn't much matter by the time the state gets it. But it gives some information. Also, there's legislation and there's uh, economics to change. Numbers that you would have seen as capacities in, say, 2009, 2010, 2011 would be much larger than what you see them today. There was a reason for that. There was a recession. Everybody's budget was cut. Everybody was making cuts in personnel and programs. And the state did away with class size limits. And they said, you can go to 40 kids in the classroom in grades 4 through 12. So a lot of systems had to do that. So suddenly, if you got a classroom that used to have 28 kids, and now it's 40, that can change a capacity number. So it's a question of when it was reported and what it looked like. Now, you got a corresponding ch change the other direction when the state reduced class size in K-2. You remember that? When they said you can have no more than 18 or 19 or 20 kids, and they finally gave enough money to cover the teachers for that, but they never did give any money for classroom space or anything else, and systems all across the state had to add mobile units and all kinds of things to handle them. So when you reduce that class size, that reduces your capacities. Okay? The numbers that you have on here, I have been assured by your school system, is as accurate as they can make them, because they have predicted and shown exactly the way what's, what's in schools today, what programs are there. For example, at Central Elementary, you've got, I believe, Matt, nine special programs there, don't you? Very small class sizes, very small class sizes. That reduces, as long as it's used that way, that reduces the number of capacity. Now, if you move those classes somewhere else, you could put bigger classes in there, but you'd have to cut somewhere else. So I'm confident that the number they've given you is as accurate as it can be. And I wanted to say that to you because I, I know in dealing with other systems, this comes up constantly. Well, that's not the same number of capacity I saw 10 years ago, or that's not the number you gave us. This, this is based upon now on exactly how the buildings are being used. Okay. So I think it's pretty accurate. Now I want to say two or three things about these projections. They are 10-year projections. They will be, if, if they're like what I've normally worked with already, they'll be fairly accurate district-wide after 10 years. They won't be that accurate for individual schools because it will vary somewhat between schools. But overall, and that's why you have them look at it every year and give you, every, give you an every year number to make the, make the adjustments to it. But if you look at your elementary schools at the top, and if you look at the capacity, you've currently got 2,362 capacity in your elementary schools. By 2031-32, you'll have 2,539 students. That's, a, and write this down, that's a growth of 19.4%. 19.4% that you've got to worry about in K-5. But you've already taken care of it. You heard Matt say it a minute ago. You funded a new elementary school. You funded an addition at an elementary school. 
you are good to go for 10 years plus in elementary capacity. Okay? You don't need that. Middle schools, you've got a total capacity of 1,180. That will go to 1,394. And if you'll write this down, that is a 48.6% increase. That's where your biggest growth is going to be, is in the middle grades. If you go to the high school, it'll grow from 5,000 to 57. That is a 35% growth. Your concerns for the future, especially after the next five years, six years, is middle school capacity and high school capacity, but primarily high school capacity. And then that gets you to questions of what do you do? I know your school board is talking about the possibility of uh, building a new middle school and using what's what is now the current middle school for high school expansion and for special programs and for vocational programs, those kinds of things. And that's a good way to do it. There are other options, of course, that you could talk about, but that's a good solid way of doing that. In that case, you build a new middle school, that whole area of the county that those kids go to get something in the, in, in the funding and, and, and there's growth that way. So you, your need is in middle school if you build a new middle school and your need is in high school space. And the easiest way with the high school space is to free up where the middle school is and build a middle school. And from my, my experience in looking at it, it's advantageous to have all your high school students as much as possible on the same campus, same location. Uh, you can waste a lot of time and spend a lot of money busing students to special programs and those kind of things. So if you can have those special classrooms and the things you need for those programs right there, then you can you can save a lot of money and a lot of time. And the kids are much more involved. Plus, you've also got those programs selectives for all the other students, okay? Any questions on that? And I don't mind being, if, you know, for something you can jump in, you won't if you do so. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, that's when, the, or, that's when the Hyatt Architect did this. The needs, the, the projects that need to be done in all, all the schools. This guy, the, you just recently did these numbers. You get, did these for Ored. The capacity numbers? Yes. yes sir. Yeah. Those are the numbers the planning department works on. <clears throat> yes. They are not the yeah. same numbers that are in the 10 year study. No. Because that, that 10 year study used not previous numbers. So these are the numbers that our planning department <clears throat> put together to confirm using the Tischler study, correct? <clears throat> that's that's my Correct. understanding. Yes, these are the okay. numbers the planning department uses. Got it. Yeah. So, did they validate? Did they validate the Titchener study? I don't know that. Well, you were very confident. Can I ask Commissioner Beaumont, can I ask a question? Yes. Who's that? That's Kevin. Yeah. Wants to ask a question when you're done. Okay. It's God's. <laughs> Um, so, I, I, again, I guess my question is, if, has the Tipster study been validated? Not that I know of. Um, I have not seen that study. Do you know when that study was done? I have not seen that study. I, okay. I, don't have any, I have no knowledge of that. Um, the two studies I have looked at is the ORID study and your architects. Well, the, the ORID study, study, got it. The ORID study was based on our numbers and our planning department. Um, do we, with the elementary school expansion, the middle school expansion, are those numbers reflected in the color coding here? No. They are not. They're not. Your, your additional capacity, the new elementary gives you 750 more. No, sir. I'm talking, yes, that's a good point too. I'm talking about the additions that are underway right now. No, I was going to say that next. The elementary edition gives you 241 more, is not my understanding. And the uh, middle school edition takes our school to 790, which is 150 more. But those are not in this capacity. 
it could be adjusted to put them put it there. Okay, a question. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Kevin. All right, my question is the, the the numbers at the high school right now, currently, when he was talking about we were going to need another high school and all that other stuff. The numbers at the high school right now, and I'm not a, I don't have the paperwork in front of me, but this is me being at the schools all the time. Is probably around like a thousand fifty kids. Am I correct? Yes, I think this year's 1,070. Okay. All right. Um, 20, 2002, which and I know NAP came on a board, correct me if I'm wrong, 2010. Was that the first graduating class of NAP? No, it started in 2008. So the first graduating class would have been, what, 11 or 12? 12. 12. Okay. All right. But, and NAP can hold 330 students, which they have probably about 260. Um, basically what I'm saying is, and I mean, there's a trend coming of kids. I can name four kids from the high school that finished early online that are, you know, good kids, not a kid that dropped out of school, you know, or whatever. But like, I mean, I look at all the people that are working at home, um, you know, after COVID and stuff like that. I mean, there's probably a third or 40% of the workforce is working at home some. So, I mean, you know, to spend a hundred million dollars on a high school, if that's what it would cost, and I'm not saying that we don't need one now, but like I would see the trend in numbers going down. I mean, uh, the class of 2002 was roughly 240 people. I just was talking to a buddy of mine who graduated 20 years ago from Currington. Was so, I mean, you're looking at the class graduating this year roughly about the same. So, I mean, that's 20 years later. And I know Nat came on and took roughly 300 kids. So, like, I just don't see the numbers in the high school, especially with the addition of NAP, as well as, you know, kids going online and, and so forth. Let, let me comment two, two responses to that one. The first one is I did not say that you need a new high school, another high school. What I said was you're going to need some additional high school capacity. And the suggestion was the possibility of doing that through using the current middle school for that. Which would and replacing that's a whole lot less cost than building a new high school. Your your growth in the high school will, will really accelerate about 26, 27 based upon the projections, and that is partly because of the new families and the people that are coming in. You can't you can't you, but you can't you can't estimate what it's going to be just based on what it was before, or what it was this year. Well, I, I can tell you that I have recently put almost a high school graduate per year for the last five years. And, and I have as well in the last seven years. I've put four through there. And my observation is the, the most of those aren't in there for periods because we're on a block schedule. Exactly. There are free periods throughout the day that I don't have, that I, I had one kid, Josh, and I don't think his senior year, he attended high school physically. And so I, I am, I mean, you may be confident in the high school attendance numbers and the projected growth on there, but I am not confident that these are accurately portraying what education in the future looks like. And I'll, you know, I have a daughter that's a senior there right now. You know, they've got, <clears throat> they're doing online classes as part of, you know, their, what is it? distance learning practicing or, or something to that effect but the amount yeah, there, of yeah there are all the, kinds of options the for amount students. of classes that are online the amount I, I i just i'm not sure that this is an accurate portrayal of education in the future that's where i was going with it kind of what commissioner Bobon is saying as well and like i said i'm in raleigh i'm out of town for training so i didn't want to mess up my perfect attendance is why i'm on the phone <laughs> <laughs> well we counted you present <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so, all right. So to summarize, kind of your thoughts are what we need to do is that the recently, you know, because we've been talking about bringing vocational ed and combining with the high school. That's been a couple years, six, seven, eight. Um, and so, so that you're, it's, is that the Board of Education's position that that's the path going forward, that 
that the county wants to pursue. Correct. Yeah, but you're saying, am I understanding that you're saying that are we in the, we want to pursue a vocational? What, what I'm trying to say is, and, and Kitty, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is we have to sell a vision. You have to sell a vision for the, from the Board of Education, Board of Commissioners, right? You have to sell, or we have to sell a vision for Kurta County as to what education, what this tax increase is going to buy the county, right? So what I'm asking, because I don't think formally a joint high school vocational ed facility has been tenured as the plan, right? This is what we wanna do and then we wanna build a middle school. We've had discussions to that end, but I don't think that's ever been formally presented as this is the way we wanna go forward. I don't know your board is, school board has done a formal proposal yet. That is what I recommend from the numbers that I see. But don't you agree that we all want the vocational school, but until the state does, gives us that opportunity for not just a one diploma track, mm -hmm. our hands are kind of tied. I mean, the ideal situation, I feel like based on what you're saying is that the middle school, that the present middle school uh, Curry Tuck Middle School would be great for the vocational. You already have two of our big vocational uh, facilities there already. But until we have um, a the diploma track changing. that will let us have a vocational school, I'm not sure we can do formally do that. Or, do y'all agree? I mean, I don't, I, I'm missing something here. Were you trying to say that's a vocational track or just offer those? As, I'd as like an to, offering of, I, I, I missed something. That it it doesn't have it, to be. Well, he wants to know, am I right? You want to know if that's what we want to do, that you've never heard us say that before. What I'm saying is looking at facilities, I, what the purpose of the facility, what the, 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 the diploma, whatever. I don't think the diploma is, that wasn't really what I was asking, right? What, what I'm asking is, are you asking for a new middle school? Or are you asking for more room for a high for high school classes? It because they're two kind of separate, right? And then the other thing is, as as you're very confident in these numbers and the high school space is the thing that you see next, I see a whole lot of red and orange way before the high school collection goes orange. And so I, I'm I'm not sure how you're rationalizing that both both in the elementary school and the middle school show significant needs way prior to the high school. But we've got to, we have to sell this to Kurta County. And so, you know, we've had this discussion about a joint facility, but I don't like, tell me what's it gonna cost to modify the middle school to be able to support the additional vocational ed. We already have a wag on what a middle school costs. So we kind of know what that number is, but but as I understand the numbers, were they here? With the budgetary numbers from a capital and from an operational, from a repairs perspective, these are the same numbers that we were presented four or five months ago. Those numbers haven't changed, but yet you, you've come out describing different purposes for the buildings that exist. There's not a cohesive, there's not a cohesive plan that's been presented no, that it's, I've seen it's yet. not a cohesive plan at this point. Right now, what we're trying to do is with the information that we have right now today, not projecting what we will have down the road. We would love to see a vocational school, but we cannot, our hands are tied until the state approves different um, qualifications for that, you know, with the math. That's the biggest obstacle that we're facing. Is, is the math um, that they have to pass in order to, in order to graduate. And so we have a lot of students that drop out because of that reason, those that want to pursue other interests uh, with vocation. So hey, we can't, hey, we can't Karen, look too much. Have other schools done like y'all did at the last school board meeting and adopted a program 
or a resolution to try to put that back yes. in play. I know it was canceled in 2014. Has, right. Have other counties done that to try to get the that degree, like with the vocational? Yes, yes. We we um, we submitted that at our last meeting. Uh, we approved that, and that's what we'd like to see other counties get on board, um, so that we're not trying to do it on our own. Because a lot of the other counties want to do the same thing. So Kevin, you were at the last meeting, and and that was approved. Um, and so that's what we'd like to do, but I don't think we can look too far down the road. I think tonight's meeting, we need to look at what, what we currently have, the numbers we have, the 10 year study and make this, some decisions based on, based on the numbers present tonight. Okay. Well, what I'll say is, do y'all know if any other counties did the same exact thing that y'all did? I mean, because I, I know I've heard a lot of other counties, you know, want the same thing, but I didn't know if, you know, if there's, you know, 30 or 40 counties that have already done it. That's where I was going with that right. question, too. Okay. Not that I'm aware of, Kevin. Right. But we did well, there, send there, that out. There are many, many systems across the state that have vocational trades programs. There, there are ways of doing it. Uh, now, you may not be able to give a separate diploma for it. Uh, and there are some problems with the math pieces of it, but people are doing it. There's all kinds of things you can do with vocational programs. Dr. Lutz, you were presenting that to the your superintendent group, right? Yes. And asking them to... It was sent out. Um, there was favorable comments from both Bobby Hanning and Bobby Steinberg as well. Um, our local uh, state school board rep, Jill Camden, also responded favorably. A lot of people are very excited to see if we can get some of that language changed. Um, re regarding the, the, the middle school cons, turning the current middle school into a CTE type hub, regardless of diploma status, we have a great bones already on that campus with our greenhouse, our welding, um, auto shop. And so while we don't have hard numbers in terms of what a, a, a renovation would look like, we already have the basis for very strong programs there. We also have an opportunity with COA to partner as well in that vision because as a growing county, this is where they would like to spend some time. So I don't want to go too far down that path, but again, and we've this, both of these boards have talked and there's been a lot of different conversations about what this could look like. <clears throat> but utilizing that campus for a CTE hub, um, we think has some real real opportunities regardless so, of that diploma status we can still walk out with credentials and people ready to to be employed so is coa looking at they would capitalize and use the Kurtuck middle school facility as part of their program potentially at night for other opportunities as well again being that we're a growing region we we are it's advantageous for coa to, to partner with us yeah that's done in many many counties when I was high school principal, <coughs> electrical, carpentry, automotive, or auto mechanics, ag, and those trade programs are all there at that lab, so it's a fully capable of uh, you know, accommodating those programs. Was HVAC there too? No. No. I think back then, well, not back then. But I, I think HVAC at one point was at COA Elizabeth City, and then I think it moved to Edenton. Yeah. But, but people didn't like getting robbed, so they're moving it back. <laughs> so uh, just to be clear here, it, it seems like we got a little muddy in, in the water here because what you're really here tonight about is the need for a middle school and the existing facilities, renovations, upgrades, right? When you start talking about taking out um, the middle school and folding it into the high school program, we'd have to build another middle school. So you're really talking about two middle schools. No, one. just one. So, but you're going to be out of capacity in, 20, in 25, right, basically, um, at Moyoc. So we're going to need another middle school to handle that capacity at some, some point around there start talking about building it. Right. So, well, you're going 150 going, more on the middle school capacity that you're adding to Moyoc. Right, which is not very far off. So, um, 
if you take out Currituck Middle School to to implement it into the high school program, you've taken a middle school offline. And the new middle school was supposed to absorb. Well, they're only at 540. I guess you get to a 750 middle school yes, was the thought least. process. At least. But it seems like that would yeah you'd be out of capacity real quick. So if you're talking about a middle school, what how big of a middle school? I guess the new middle school what would it be a thousand student capacity? Is that really the so. thought process I would here? Think at least a thousand. Well, okay. and then with, with, with the question with the middle school is, well, we got two of them. And it looks like the Currituck Middle School has got capacity for a while. How many do they well, have? 350? 339 right now, it says. So I yeah. guess my, my question is then is, has there been any thought with the school board of, while this is creeping up on us fast, if we move, or shifted the line a little bit to absorb some of that capacity into the Currituck. Um, you may not, you may not, move, you may not have to move that line too much to absorb enough to reduce that number down. That could give you some more time then to, to build a school. I mean, has that thought been? Just, you've thought about that too. So that's a possibility. We just hated the thought. We were hoping to make, you know. That's not popular. No, no, I, I know. It's, I, I know it's not popular. I'm just looking at. Well, I'm just saying we were hoping to do it all at once, so okay. you, you get all the ugliness all at once. Well, time. I know. I'm just looking at. There's so much capacity still at the Currituck Middle School right now that. Well, uh, even at the max. It's closer loaded. to go to Currituck Middle School than it is to Moyock Middle School, and they all. I mean, I'm just using that as an example. It's a quicker route to get there. I can say, I, and, and this is where it doesn't show, and we've largely focused on those elementary numbers because capacity in elementary is you reach a threshold, you're out of rooms. Currituck Middle School, again, due to specific programs that we're required to offer through the state to serve all of our kids, I have two available classrooms currently. Despite that it says 540, it, it, it does come down to classroom space. And so when we do our building tours, uh, you'll see some of this in action, and you'll be able to put your eyes on it and go, oh, okay, this these kids are going to take up X amount of space. And so what the, those numbers are not always, they're, they're not a perfect tie-in. So that okay, 540 but capacity probably is going to be a lot less. It's, it's, it's less. And, and, a per, and that, that 540 number, I think, has largely stayed fairly steady when I went back and looked at the last 10 years, and I don't know how closely that middle school has been. Sure. But so, you're confident in those numbers. I'm as confident as, as I know how to be. Uh, and if projections are projections. I know my my history with Ored and, and seeing what they do, and they're, they're usually very accurate. So one of the questions that are, that's inevitably going to come up when you start talking about closing this middle school and building another is where you where will you build it and. It will be a, a tough sale for the southern end of the county if all we're doing is looking towards the northern end to build a second elementary school. And I realize that's where our capacity is. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. But when you close that middle school, the uh, tendency will be to look north. And I think that will be uh, a very tough pill for the southern end to swallow. You, that is not their yeah, you, you have to consider. Have property in mind, uh, and it, it would not be at the north end of the county. Yeah. That, that, but that's, your point is a very good one. Uh, you have to consider the politics of these kind of things. And we have. And, and, and I, I know you have. I, I have every confidence that you have. But what, hey, a, what, a, what a new middle school does do Hold for on you. Second, Kevin. It gives okay. all those people in the southern end something. Because they're getting, they're, their kids are going to be having a new middle school. So there's a reason for them to like that if you place it in the right area. Well, that's good. That's yeah. Kevin, uh, Kevin, go ahead and ask your question. How many middle school kids go to, from Knott's Island, go to Mayock Middle? I know Curry Tuck Middle, it, it used to be like two or three. That was a couple of years ago. It's probably zero now. But I'm curious because the Knott's Island kids, used to always, and Kelly, you can attest to this, the Knott's Island kids always went to Curry Tuck Middle. But I'm curious, how many go to Mayock Middle Probably from Knott's Island? Uh, I don't think it's that high. Forty? I, 
Oh, hold on, they're still debating. <laughs> well, I would say 15 to 20 per class. What would you say, Dr. Our, our classes, it depends on the size of our classes. The last few years have been 14 to 16 students coming out of my, uh, like Knott's that? Island. So yeah. you're probably talking maybe 30 to Mayock and another 10 to Currituck Middle. I don't have exact numbers. But it doesn't, I looked at that, it doesn't move the meter, it doesn't change, um, it doesn't change it, but we have looked at pro possibly, you know, what if our, what if not Simon was reassigned to Currituck Middle, what if it remained at Mayock, what if we have, and, and right now there is still choice. So some go to Currituck Middle and some go to Mayock. And they, they have, have transportation, the whichever way, right? Right, they do have the choice, but not on is zoned for Mayock at this time, so they have to do a transfer request. But we do, which we honor, need, right? But I mean, to remind people that ferry part of the big reason we have the ferry was for the schools back, you know, years ago. And the kids are going to ride the ferry, you know, for high school anyway. But um, I don't know if it's been the past few years, if it's been, I don't think parents fully understand on Knott's Island that they do have that choice. And so, I mean, I've been trying to get that out there and just let people know. I mean, the two biggest issues, the two biggest things difference-wise are the numbers like we're talking about right now. I mean, Curry Tuck is approximately half the size of Mayock and the transportation. You have to ride the bus and go through Virginia to get to Mayock, whereas you would get on the ferry as the high school kids do right now. So, I mean, um, I don't know, like I said, the exact numbers, but this is the biggest, one of the bigger classes for fifth grade um, from Knott's Island going. I think we're at 18. Um, and so they're, they are looking at that, but um, because it's in the years past, I, really stayed, I mean, transportation is provided for them because the ferry, the, the bus is already on the ferry going to the high school. Correct. And so, a, school, a school board will find as you go through this growth process, that you will have to consider redistricting much more than you do now because you won't always be able to keep the, the clean feeder systems all of them kids in this elementary school will go to this middle school they may go different ways because of numbers and where they live oh yes when i was in johnston county we were, we were we had years we were growing two thousand kids a year and there were years i was opening three new schools a year and having to redistrict all those. Do you think I, 100? And what happens is if you've got two. one school and you build another one fairly close, try to put it in the center, and suddenly the other one's over on the side. And that you've got, you, you just run into all kinds of issues. Difference. But you deal with those as you get to them. You know, your issue right now is that you have this growth oh. coming. You've got some pretty good projections of what it looks like. Yeah, the school board is trying to oh. deal with that in time so that it doesn't become an issue down the road. They've all, you also got the issue of older buildings that need a considerable amount of work. And in fact, that October height studies, $51 million for all of those, those needs. Now, do all have to be done immediately? No, something they can be time and space. But what the school board needs from you is some kind of a commitment at some point in time that we would do something. And I want to talk a little, little bit about options, just a little bit. Although you know, I think, I know Ike knows all those options. He's been around and worked through quite, he knows all the, the options and has, has great information. And you're fortunate to have that kind of knowledge on, on your side. There's possible state grants from the needs, needs based school facilities fund. And I know you've made an application for that for the elementary school. And I hope you get it. I would also say to you that I know that every school system I'm looking at across the state is eligible, has an application in this year. Uh, I saw one the other day, 150 million they'd asked for. 100 here, 150 there, 35 over here. There's not going to be near enough money there this time to cover everybody. So who knows who's going to get it? Okay. And every school system in 95 counties are eligible. There's only five counties that are not eligible. That's Wake. Charlotte, Mecklenburg, uh, Guilford, Durham, and Buncombe. Those five are not eligible to apply. Everybody else is eligible to apply and are applying. So hopefully you'll get it. You, you, 
you've got some legislative help that, that, that you can use to, to influence that problem just a little bit. But I hate to think that that would be done, but it, if you don't do it, everybody else is going to be doing it. Yeah. So that, that's the potential. And if you get that, then you have to provide a match 15% on that, that money for your county. There's some, there's no match, or some's five, some 10, some is 15. But you're at 15. Okay, that, that's one possibility. But yours right now would be for what you're doing already. But if you do that and you get it, that's one you don't have to worry about funding. You, you'll, you'll have that in place that you could look at use of those funds somewhere else. There's pay as you go. That's wonderful if you can do it. And you, you may be able to as a county. I, I don't know your finances. I haven't looked at them. Uh, I have worked in a couple of situations where it was done that way. Now, Catawba County, uh, I did an interim superintendency in Hickory City. Catawba County has three school systems, Hickory City, Newton Conover, and Catawba County. And they, did, they were doing pretty much pay as you go. They did occasionally borrow some, but most of it was pay as you go. And every system knew what they were going to get when they were going to get it. And it was right, you know, you could count on it. It was right there. They said, yes, you're going to get this money this year. Start planning. It was there. And it's just, it worked, worked beautifully. Not everyone can afford to do that. Now, most folks, most families can't afford to buy a house. Just pay us a go. They have to get a mortgage. And school systems and counties do the same kind of thing. Uh, either barring with other authority that, uh, like you said, you have authority to do other borrowing without doing a bond issue or through a bond issue. But either way, it's borrowing. Uh, bond issues tend to be a little less percentage-wise when you sell them than what, what the other type of loans are, but that depends on the economy at the time and, and, and what you get. So th those are basically the different, the different options. But I do want to share a little bit of information with you on bonds, not necessarily trying to say that's the way you may want to go. If you can handle it, pay as you go, and you can say to your school board, we can get, make sure that you have the money to start building a new middle school or whatever it is, and you can go ahead and start start planning on it, and they can give you a schedule of when the money's going to be needed. That's wonderful. You don't have to run any bond campaigns. There's no work for that. Go to it. I think you all would welcome that, wouldn't you? Yes. I, I, I expect that you would. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But if you can't do that, then the alternative to it is a bond issue. Now, you've got one handout here I wanted to give you a little information on. It's a several page one. It's in blue and red. This is a historical information recently on bond campaigns going back to 1995. Where they were, what the amounts were, and whether they passed or failed. And if you go back, if you're on the first page of 95, you go up at the top of it in blue. About the sixth one down, you'll see Johnston County. I was superintendent there and passed that bond issue there in 1995. That's a long time ago. Johnston County had not passed a bond issue in 40 years when I went there. Superintendent. Even the state bond issues had failed in Johnston County. Now, they passed statewide, but they failed in Johnston County. We passed that bond issue with a 75% yes vote. They have since then done seven in a row. I worked with Union County. They had, uh, let's see when they had their next, their first one. In 2000, they had had a horrible history of passing. They have now passed eight in a row. You can go through and see them, identify where they were. The last defeated one in the state was in 2013. There has not been one defeated since then. Every one since then, state and state, has been approved. When you, um, when you presented this bond referendum, how quickly did your school system need the funding for it? Was it the same? Uh, well, it, it, was, it varied from system to system. Within a couple of years, possibly? Yes, a couple of years. Okay, so some, in some cases, more than that. Um, and, and you don't need all of it immediately. You know, what, what you would do is a flow chart that shows what you would need and how many months you, to, you would need to the next one. And then you would usually try to have two or three sales of the bond on the 10-year period, 7 to 10-year period of time. And that's 
Jim, we did one um, years ago for, for one of our schools, Jarvisburg Elementary mm -hmm. in yeah, Shawborough. That, was that, what, do you remember what year that was? It opened in 08. Yeah, that was. Yeah, but it was after 95. Yeah, it, it was early 2000s, I thought. Yeah, but it's, it's not 2000. Yeah, six, seven. Yeah, I don't see that. that I don't know, this that, is that, from that, the that state. Was, those are <laughs> bonds. They weren't? They were, yeah. they were paid uh, partly by uh, pay as you go and partly by installment purchase. Yeah, I didn't think it was but a it, bond. But are, are they on um, the ballot? No, installment voted, purchase financing is not. I know, but there was voter. something that we voted on at I the polls. That, that was prior. Oh, was that was prior to Jarvis Park. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe that's the state. state. Well, I believe you told me that you have not had a okay. school bond. Yeah. 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 Right. The closest one to you is Camden. They had one in 20. They passed one in 20 for 33 million. So just to show you, bond issues pass. When they're done right, North Carolina, bond issues pass. They work. You've got to plan for them. You've got to do it, do it the right kind of way, and there are ways of doing it. And there are ways of doing it wrong, and you can get beat if you do it wrong. I, I had two that I consulted on that lost, and both of them lost. They lost both, both of them two reasons. Both both cases, they refused to wait till when they should have started doing it. They started a long time ahead of time. What happens on that is that just allows folks who are opposed to it to organize when you do that. And the second was they they were both doing things that were extremely unpopular. One of them was. Davie County, they have, Davie has a law, very large 4A high school, uh, very successful in athletics and band and all those kinds of things. They're having tremendous growth in the eastern part of the county coming out of Winston-Salem. And the school board wants, wanted to build a second high school in the eastern part of the county. Uh, the other possibility was, was to build a ninth grade center close to the current one, at, at this, some busing. And I, I told them, I said, you know, that's the best way you can go. But they, they insisted on going to building a new high school. And uh, the older folks, the, their old wife and folks who, who loved athletics and band, they just fought it like crazy and they beat it. Uh, Surrey County, and I never could figure this one out. They had an elementary school that they, for some reason, the school board wanted to close. It was in a good location. It was in good condition. It was a good sizable school. And I never really knew, could figure out why they insisted, but they insisted that part of the process would be closed in school. Well, those people thought it would be. So those are the kind of things that you, you have to make sure the politics and that you're not doing stupid stuff, those kind of things. You know. That's a part of the consideration you do when you put your plan together. There have been some changes uh, over the last few years. Voting patterns have changed. Uh, there's much, much more early voting now, uh, both by early voting sites and by mail-in ballots. Uh, you experience, experienced that in 20. Experienced the some in 18, but not to the extent that we did in 20. I did a couple of things to try to get some information about that, how it might affect. And if you, if you should decide to do a bond issue, your school system would put together a campaign committee that's got to be separate from the school system that would raise money and fund it and would run it. But they would have to plot and plan the campaign based upon a number of factors. And some of those factors would have to consider what's different now than what it might have been before. My rule of thumb always was you, you start your public campaign the last three weeks. You organize, you've got all your materials ready, everything's to go, and then you roll it out saturate everything the last three weeks and that works uh, but that does not necessarily reach the folks who might vote early on the folks who you know, mail in ballots uh, i talked to some a couple of school systems that did 18 and one did one in 20 and they both said that they wish they had considered that more they, they both passed but they said they did not get as high a percentage yes as they normally did so and they recommended that you start at least four to five weeks of the public campaign, four to five weeks out. I also did some other research. Let me find it here. And the best I could find was from Pew, who's, who's a 
really valid research organization. And they researched and looked at what actually took place in the 20 election, how people voted, why they did it, the way they did it, when they did it, and things that would be important for consideration. Uh, 2020 was very different. And what they found was that a vast number, well, more than a majority of the folks who voted early, or especially the ones who voted by mail, excuse me, the ones who voted by mail, did it because of fear of COVID, that they might not be able to go to the polling place. So they went, they did that. So that's something that we may have again, may not, may not be a factor this time. And also, a really interesting thing was of the ones who voted by mail, 23% of those folks did it the last week for election day. 23% and 76% of them did it within the last two weeks before election. So they didn't do it real early. They did it earlier than if they'd gone to the poll, but they didn't do it real early. So whether that will happen again or not, I don't know, but that, that's interesting. And that's, you, you, you folks would need to consider that if they do that. So your options, if you decide on a plan, however you decide to fund it the school board needs to know that they need to know when and they need to you need to know what it's going to be for because you've got to make your decision and then it's got to be timed out so that you can look at it and see how you fund it whether you can fund it pay as you go whether you can borrow it without a bond issue or whether a bond issue is necessary if you go with a bond issue you're going to do that bond issue this year in november there's a very tight time time frame the school board would need to do their resolution either in April or May. I, I recommend April. Just make sure there's plenty of time in between. But if you need more time than that to get your plan firm, uh, May, is, May meets the guidelines. They would have to go to the commissioners, and you have to act on it in June. That way, I believe I, that's the time frame that you put out right. in that schedule. That would allow you to meet all the deadlines, legal deadlines, for election in November. And in North Carolina, school bond issues have to be held at the general election. Used to be you didn't have to do that. There's a lot of research on that. Saturday is the best day of the week to pass a bond issue across the nation. A lot of states allow them to be held on Saturday. But everybody's at the lake and doing other things. <laughs> so so that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. But the main thing I want to share with you is two things. First of all, to say to both uh, both boards, your getting together like this is unusual. And all the questions were valid questions, the concerns are valid, and people come at them from different reasons and different viewpoints. And all those are great. You know, uh, I think you've got good, solid information. Will it be perfect? Probably not. But I think it's good, solid information. What I know with the folks who do it put it together uh, but you, you need to as best as possible to communicate and share if there's a question concern ask it if you hear something ask get get the right information both both ways so that you're not misunderstanding each other because I've seen that so often when you've got these two competing boards that because of the way the law is set up it just makes it fric friction to this all the time it's just constant and uh, that's unfortunate. It's not that way in every state. And in most states, commissioners don't have to worry about schools. Schools they, they set their own tax rate and raise their own money and do it. You know, they get blamed <laughs> if the tax rates go up. Yeah. Uh, bond issues also, if you're a growing county, uh, can often be repaid through the extra taxes that are coming in off the growth uh, and without having to raise taxes. You'd have to calculate that yourself and look at it and see what you expect, if you think you can do that. In Johnson County, they passed seven in a row. They're planning their eighth one this November, and they've done every one of those with no tax increase. Totally off the growth. But what you begin to get in growth, the first thing you get are the developments and the rooftops of houses. And they pay up about enough tax to maybe meet what services you're providing for. How do they, 
I'm sorry. How did when you're you talking about, I'm sorry. You're referring to new, uh, being Johnson County being repaid through new growth, yes. and and what what taxation or what revenue was received well, in Johnson County, County that paid for property them. tax, the sales tax. Uh, when you begin to get homes, you you get property tax off those homes. Now you don't get a, a tremendous amount, uh, especially if they're smaller homes. You may get. You may break even on the services you provide for what tax you're getting off of. But, but once you get a certain number, then you begin to see the convenience stores, you begin to see restaurants, you begin to see supermarkets who come on and they pay property tax. And they pay all the sales tax that they spend in those places. And once you get, begin to get a number of those in the homes, then the next, the larger things begin to happen. And, and you can see it in places place like Union County, Johnson County, Frank, all these who are around the areas where the growth comes, of course, your growth is coming out of Virginia. Uh, so, but it happens very consistently. But you would need to kind of calculate that and look and see your plan, whether you think you'd have to raise taxes or whatever it is. You want to be honest with your public about what, what you'd have to do. But if you don't have to tax additionally, that's certainly an easier sell. Than, although you can sell it if there is a certain One of, the, one of the real advantages of a bond, or barring the other way also, is that you're paying it back, and you folks coming in are helping pay it back, pay it off. If you just pay it all out up front front, that's your current citizens paying for it. But a bond issue, or you borrowed the money, they're paying it back, having pay it back with the taxes they pay. And one of the questions you'll get if you haven't gotten it already from folks who are longtime citizens, natives of the area, is why should we build schools for those people bringing their kids in here? Why don't they build them? And that's a good argument. Yeah. This way, with a bond, they do have to pay for it. So that's one of the arguments to go that way. So you, you have options. Uh, you need to think, move pretty quickly, though, if you're going to do it this, this fall. Other questions? things that I can try to respond to. You've been, you've been wonderful and your questions have been totally on target. Totally on target. So, so in your mind, what are the next steps? The next step is for the school board to decide between now and May, now April or May, what they want to ask you to do. If they want to ask you to do a bond referendum, they need to do a resolution at their board and Facebook, and then that is transmitted to you and you you would deal with that in June. And the law is, and I, I, you help me on this if I say this wrong. You're the, you're the attorney in this. And I, I, I could say the legal thing's wrong. But the law uh, says a school board can petition the county commissioners for bond referendum. It's up to you then to set the amount and the date. My understanding of the law, it doesn't give you the authority to say no. Um, yeah, that, that I'm not sure about. I don't know if the county commissioners have to call for the referendum. But I wouldn't want, I, it wouldn't be wise doing it without both boards agreeing to it. So, so it's best off not to get it. I probably shouldn't even mention that. I have used it before. It was in more contentious. I think my, one of my biggest concerns would be here we are at the end of March. We're looking at April. And if, if you're going to do something to get it on the ballot for November, I would like to see, find out what the commissioners would be open to. What would be your preference? Um, and then we can we can discuss that too. Well, our meeting, our April meeting is next week. That's what I'm saying. Or we, we got. Yeah, but we need to. We got to if we're going to present it, mm -hmm. if we're not going to present it until our April meeting, mm -hmm. then we present it to the commissioners, mm -hmm. then we wait. Right. We're going to be behind with our timeline. Oh. So, so are you wanting, are you wanting the $51 million for renovations and the $45 million for new middle school? Right. Exactly. No, so that's what, that's what we need to decide on what we're going to request. but. 
whatever that number is, say the number was, what would you say, Matt? I mean, I know we don't, we don't want to have, the 51 million is our wish list. That's yeah, I think everything brand new. Yeah. yeah, but I think the previous discussion, that 51 number went down to about the 20s. Right. The 51 yeah, so that's really million cut in half is almost. for everything to be repaired at all schools, everything yeah. done, and we know that's not right, reality. Right, but, but I think the immediate need probably were closer to the 20s is what I heard earlier. I think that's correct. That's yes, right. Yes, and, and, then, and then the $45 million for the new elementary school, if it's 27, 28, isn't an immediate need. That's a, that's a future need as well. Right. So it sounds like the immediate need is in the 20s, I think, is what I'm hearing, possibly. Yeah. The immediate need would be the, if you look at those, Matthew may want to help this, but your, the, the most immediate need would be around 20 million. I think it's broken down. And if down that's what the number, final number that you guys come up with, then the Board of Commissioners then need to have a discussion then with that number, then, then you know, what's the options for do we need to discuss bonds or anything else, or can we do it another way? Right. So that might be the other question for right now. Then. Okay. Just so, to be sure, Mike, it's immediate need twenty million in renovations. That, yes, and, and and upgrades. And we feel like we need to do another stuff. Right, but I just but, but yeah, I just but the new middle school is projected twenty seven twenty eight projection. So that's not an immediate. Is that is that not? That, it, it's well, not immediate, but you need to start to planning on it pretty quickly. Uh, do you want the, are you, say, are you saying the middle school will come online 27, 28? Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. You need an online open. Place. So, right. so yeah. then, then you do need, okay. you need those the bond now for, the, for that. To yeah. plan because for that. you wouldn't want it, two bonds so close. Yeah. No, it needs to be it needs to be a single ad. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, but you, you wouldn't have to immediately sell it. You could hold it to you. Right. You, you just need to fund up front for architects, engineers, you, when, a when it comes purchase. time, that's available to It's us. available. We don't right. have to start right. spending the money, but we know that it's available. Yeah. Are you going to look at any redistricting? If I was the public and I saw where the Curry Cup Middle School has 140 kids. Mm -hmm. a lot of students. Yeah. And so my thought process as a taxpayer is, why are you Right, we've, we've talked about that. Part of the reason for that is, and the plan that I've talked about is, that you need additional space for the high school. And no matter what, whether before you shift those mills to the lines and do that, you still got the issue of dealing with the high school. They, but there's ways of expanding the high school. The high school was built I'm sure with potential sure expansion. Sure but my, my problem is, when I do the math, with the middle schools, with current capacity, with the additional 150 seats going in in Moyoc. And I, I might have missed the numbers, but that total comes up to me a total capacity of 1,394. That's correct. When I look at the school loading between both middle schools, could that possibly be a coincidence? The total requirements in 2031 are that capacity. That's number. correct. So we're going to build a new middle school. That's that to me is the is the sale issue, right? We're asking the county residents to fund a 47 million dollar structure that when you do the totals, we don't need. Well, you do need it because either that or you have to do something with high school. Agreed, but the high school is a is down the road a lot further than the middle schools that we're using to as the catalyst. Well, it's not far down the road. It's in tw twenty seven. Uh, uh, twenty seven, twenty eight will be at capacity at the middle school, even with one hundred and fifty extra seats. With both schools. Yeah. With well. Middle school. Both middle schools. Just the boy. Now you'll 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 have capacity with, with what so. your addition. He's exactly right with your addition to the middle school. Now you'll have capacity for middle between the two yeah. if you move lines. <clears throat> but that doesn't help you with your other situation. Right. It's just, yeah. Right, but the and other situation doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new middle school when may, we have a high school that does have the ability to expand. I, I'm not. We may get there, but again, I I have, I do not have confidence in our capacity. 
studies of how many kids we can service out of the high school because again, education has changed. We don't have kids in their four periods. There is a lot more flexibility in the high school that we've not done, and I'm not, this is not a finger pointing, that analysis has never been done. And it continuously, there's more kids going to COA, there's more kids that aren't ever on campus. We don't, I don't think we truly, I mean, I, maybe we do. Do you all know what that impact is? It, how many kids are in the building in any given day? Not, not ADM, right? I, and I don't know that that analysis has really been, been done. And as we move, as we move and migrate, and I'm a big, I'm a big CTE fan, right? I've got, I have one child that what I'm going to call, well, I guess, no. but most of them are in some form of trade. So I'm completely in support of that. But I don't know that we, to suggest that we need to build a middle school to increase capacity when there's so many, there's a lot that is not known yet. And that's my, my, I'm a numbers guy, sorry. That's all right. You have to have a numbers guy on the team. The middle school that we need, the middle school numbers support the middle school in itself. In 27, 28, it's expected that we're gonna have 1,319 middle school students. And with our extra 150 seats with the Moyoc edition, we are only going to have 1,330 seats. So that's so 12. So we're going to need the middle 11. school. We're going to need extra seats. If we go back to the old adage, when do you build it? Do you build it when it's at capacity, or do you start building it after it's at capacity? So you're, you're, you're actually bringing it online before you're projected to be full, and you haven't moved a line. You've done nothing to alleviate Moyoc's, Moyoc Middle's problems by simply moving on the right. And then now, I know that's odd here in Currituck, but where I grew up, it happened all the time. Yeah. Just like you were alluding to, it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah. I know parents are gonna raise hell, but I guarantee all the people that moved here had that happen to them wherever they're from too. Well, so, once you know, we get the extra 150 seats, we will be all right for a little while. We probably don't. longer than a little while, because you still haven't moved a body to Currituck Middle. Correct. You still haven't done that. You still haven't tried to to mitigate that overflow problem <coughs> at Moyoc Middle by moving lines. Now, and then, and I, 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 the, the high school could potentially be full at that time. And that's something we, we've got time to deal with as it comes down, as Paul was saying, with the changes to the way high schoolers are going to school now, maybe that number changes again and again and again as we as we move forward through the next several years. And there's the ability to expand the high school, supposedly, which we haven't looked at. We haven't even had an engineer look at it and say, what does that look like? So th this is food for thought. If you're going to, to Paul's point, try and sell this to the public, um, yeah, the people in Mayock will probably vote for it, but the southern end of the county isn't because their school's not full. Hey, Commissioner White, Commissioner White, can I say something? Like, with pertaining to NAP, NAP has about 200 and some kids, about 270 kids, on a daily average, and I worked NAP the other day as the SRO because one of our SROs was out to the sheriff's office. They have 100 to 120 kids a day. That'll just show how much it's changing on campus. So the average daily attendance is not even half of how many kids that they have at the school. The options available through COA and through online. In early college, you get that lot because they have to go to off campus. Right, the last two years of their schooling, most of them are at COA. Right. So, right. so that that then helps make that continued point yeah. is that we don't know we, we know how many kids are assigned to the school, That's the but unknown, we don't right. yeah. we don't know how many kids are in the building. Well, and cur currently, you would have more students from early college going off campus like that than you would from regular high school. There are kids. That are that are assigned to NAP that probably never go to NAP anymore. They're they're all. That's correct. That's typical with early colleges. But but aren't they still counted as part of the ADM because they're assigned to NAP? That that's the point I'm trying to make is that. Yeah, right. the state the state allows and the state allows you to count them both in the public school ADM and in the community college ADM. Right. And, well, and then, but the, the ADM is really the attendance. 
right? It's how many boots Attend. are on the ground basically right. each day. It's the actual attendance to the well, that, that really it's a sign. No, it's really it not should a, be, but it's, it's not based on ADM anymore. It's based upon your right. the highest of your first two months. Right. Whatever. In the right. 20 enrollment. days or in the 40 days. Right. Enrollment and, and actual students are two different things. Two different things. Do, do, do North we, Carolina doesn't fund on ADM basis. Do we know basis. or we looked at um, with, the, with regard to the middle schools, and Kevin made a point earlier about um, uh, Big Wedgwood, um, do we know how far, if we did look at line shift, where we would have to put that or where would we well, have to Well, the thing is, I just. To I, equalize it out a little bit. Better? I just looked at that. If you're talking about Wedgwood, after Wedgwood is Rivers Edge, and after Rivers Edge is Curry Tuck on the Sound. So we have other neighborhoods we moved right there. Wedgwood. Right, okay. I mean, you couldn't just couldn't well, just take example. one side of. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, right. Yeah, I was just wondering, is there a has have, looked at where where you would have to move the line? Well, I had already down written that down and said we need to talk to Jimmy. <laughs> okay, because I mean, I'd like to know that too. As I guess is how far if if you moved it a mile, maybe. Well, the other part take, of it, yeah, yeah. Is it conceivable to what would it look like? How would it equalize the schools out a little bit better? I mean, I have just an option that I think I would like to know if we're going to be looking at discussing doing a new middle school. Do we look at all the options? Do we have all the data in front? If we moved it a little here and switched this, could we buy two, three, four more years? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we need an honest assessment of enrollment versus attendance. If we're looking at just Enrollment and making decisions for enrollment, that that might be the wrong answer for the high schools especially. But if we're looking at actual attendance, uh, how many kids are, are at COA, and I know that's a, a good number, just haven't been over there in the last few months. Um, I think, you know, that's, and online, I don't know how many kids are still doing online classes. I know it was um, not a great deal when I was there, but I do know that that's a, an option. And I think that there needs to be a, a real assessment at what actual attendance looks like, especially if you're going to sell, we need a new high school or we need a new middle school. I think that that's going to be a question that people are going to want to know the answer to. Um, so if you're trying to get out ahead of it, I think that's something that really needs We will see. We will see that with the tour. You know, we'll see. Well, we need what to, bodies there. But we well, know. Well, well, we 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 can we can get that number. Jimmy can. Yeah. Well, no, Renee can do. Oh, Renee she'll, can she'll do it too. But I mean, you'll. And then I don't think it's going to be as many as you think. Um, so last question on average, we had 60 high school students going to college classes here on campus. Oh, I was talking about Jimmy doing this. Mm -hmm. 60. Yeah. I think that kind of information is important to make people understand because there may be this, and, and I will say maybe a misconception that a lot of kids never came back, you know, that they're at home on the computer right. like they were during the pandemic. And I think it needs to be clarified because there may be this uh, few number that are actually still doing that. Those numbers, all these numbers, guys. I think a lot of the public would like numbers. These like numbers that you got in the 10 data, these are the ones that are actually enrolled in your school. That would not be any who's doing something else, so computer lessons. And you, you're not off in the virtual option. And please, please correct me if, I, if I'm wrong. But most of your students who are in school who are doing online are still at the school doing it online. Plus, you, you also have to provide a staff member to be with them while they're doing it. It's not, it doesn't free the school up of being responsible for those students. Yeah. I've told you all I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, uh, you know, that's, if, Karen, when you were asking what we want to see, I think you just heard what we want to see. But yeah. it really, I think it helps you too to really condense it down and boil it down to what you really need and when you really need. Okay. If you really think about it. And what you know, we're trying to do is be proactive. Sure. Absolutely. We don't want to get caught 
right. like we have in the past of not having a long range plan. So that's why I think the joint meetings are good for us to ask the questions and get answers to your questions and then formulate a plan. And that's all we mm -hmm. want to do is make sure that we have adequate facilities for our youth in the county. And so I appreciate your willingness to meet with us and uh, go over all the details and, and make an informative decision on which way we need to go. So what we'll do is discuss our options of, of funding and get some numbers back to Ike. We'll get those to you and you can share it with the sure. board. Yes. And any other questions that you can think of that you may have for us, please get them to us as soon as possible because time is of the essence if we are hoping to get this on the November ballot. But I think, Matt, you know, if you're, if, since you're going to be the one that's getting this stuff together, <laughs> for me personally, if you if you have your real number, attendance numbers, and overlay that with your projected, so you can see them side by side. Or current. Yeah. Right. So we're, as we're talking about this, you know, there's enrollment and attendance. And so the attendance is, you know, the, the real number, right? How many you actually it, serve? Yes, right? I looked at that before, like my right. so, elementary. Well, let's let's be, care, let's be careful how, how we define those two things. Because the other questions I heard you ask, I thought were <clears> more valid, was if their students are actually going somewhere else for the program, right? And they're not there. But that just because a student is not in attendance does not mean they're not enrolled. No, I, I, that's the, but, it's so the number that would throw you off if you try to reduce the number because they're absent. Yeah, yeah. yeah they still got to deal with those kids, and they're the no, that's not the point. The point is if you. You're not out of space if the child's not there. But they may not be there this semester, or they may only be there. Right, but three it's going to help you understand trends. They may not be there this week, but they may well, be next week. Well, not, and that's that's different, though. You're always going to have that flux of kids that's that are what I'm out saying, for that's, whatever that's reason. So that's a different but, issue than ones who are doing something. Well, that's, it, that's a it, probably it, minimal. Again, number. going back to Josh, right? Josh did not attend. I think he was in the ag building one semester, one class for the entire year. For yeah. ADM numbers, he was counted as a one the entire school year. And that that's that CTE track. That's that, you know, he was in the welding program, so he was over at COA. That's exactly I, right. But that, that's different than attendance. Absence. That's, he wasn't an absence. He was just in other programs. Correct. But he would never be in the school. That's right. Therefore. So, so what I'm saying is if you, that's two different counts. So. All right. Well, I, well, I think I'm interested in the body of the schools. Times. That's the reality. The people that the, the kids that are there every day, day in and day out. There's right. going to be a how many plus. seats do we need? Right. The the other thing I would request, Matt, is that with the expected additions at Moyak Elementary and Moyak Middle School, take those numbers and add them into the capacity numbers. In other words, this bar chart should reflect at that point in time how many seats are available. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Or, or it could make an adjustment for you. Uh, in other words, we have the max capacity over here, but n nowhere in the color coding do we do we change to reflect That's excellent. Excellent the suggestion. additional capacity created. Excellent suggestion. I think so. what we're trying to avoid is the situation we've got in where the capacity is 529, and I believe we've got 696 students there today. So we're over capacity quite a bit, and yes, we're building a new addition, but for a couple of years it's been tough, you know, with them being overcrowded, and so we want to, we want to again. I think you're, well, that's the point of these meetings, is that we, that, that problem wasn't recognized, and, and the explosion growth happened, right? We, didn't, we saw unrealized growth in new home sales that we haven't seen because of the stagnant economy, or sluggish economy prior to that. So, there's a, there's a couple of factors, but the fact that we're having these conversations and, and really focused in on it, I think prevents that down the road. And, and, and that's that's where we're at, really. And then the other thing is when you say that's taking into account that the mobile classrooms aren't counted in the capacity numbers. So it's not like there are kids in the hallway because they've got so many kids. They're in brand new portable classrooms. So. We're thankful they are, and so that room is good, but the PE... I, no, no, no. We completely understand that. Right. Whole, you know, not to mention the mobile units are costing us additional money. Um, 
cost, costing. Well, both Do boards have done a great job of what you've done to this point. There's no question about that. I can tell you horror stories from working across the state with different systems, systems that you you wouldn't think would have money problems. And, and I think we understand you know, those needs are coming up. But I think we also need to understand, too, have we, because when the questions start flying at us, have we gotten all the data? Have we, have we, Absolutely. Yeah, have, have we, have we looked at every <laughs> I told you I option, have job. every possibility to get as much time and do everything we can? And, and, you know, and, what, and that's all I think we're really needing is all that additional information to help them decide, you know, when and what and how. So, and I, I go on it. So the, the high school question, I get that one with space and data. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the middle school, these are kids in seats in sections of classrooms. So there's, there, there's a number where you, and we are very fortunate, we're adding that addition on Mayock Middle School because we will literally be out of space soon. So that, that's going to come in a very timely manner. Curatec Middle, while that number does sit at 540, I'm going to do a very tight analysis on room usage. Okay. Because again, we it, it gets different at the secondary level than at every level it has a different meaning towards what capacity is. You have a much greater flexibility at the high school level with classroom usage than you do at middle school. And, and it's because things are done by grade level and kids don't change grade levels. I don't want to get too far into the weeds on that. And so I'm going to do a very tight analysis on that classroom usage at Kurtuck Middle. Because while it may be 540, that is almost in a perfect world where we're not serving kids of high needs and we're not doing, we're providing education as required by the state. So I, I will make sure that that is ready to go as, as part of this. And we'll make sure when we do our building tours, we'll take a look at that as well. Right, and I was going to say, when you do the tours, especially, you know, with Jarvis and, and when you've been in, when you go from like Moyak Middle to Curry Tech Middle, you can see the difference. I mean, I think I reported to somebody, there's still, they're still using the same cabinets from 30 years ago because I remember them. And so, right. I mean, so Curry Tech Middle, I mean, we're talking about a new school, that school, really, and we were just in there a couple weeks ago and I commented the desk. I mean, I swear I think they're using the same desk from 30 or 40 years ago, too. So, I mean, they, they were built better. Built better back then. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's still functions of the You really see a difference when you right. go from Millyot Middle, you know, to Curry Tech Middle. As far as what's as provided as what, for one school versus Right. It other. does look, I mean, like I said, we went to those two and spent the day at both of them and we really take them time to look at those little things. So, I mean, that school really, I mean, the old high school really, it, it needs, it needs a, it's an deep. upgrade. Yeah. It does. So, but yeah, just so I'm clear, I just want to make sure. So it's you want the numbers on the moving, on, an analysis of moving some lines and how it would affect the number, and a clear direction on what we think we need to go. Whether I think we're in agreement, it's not whether it's not the high school. I mean, that's what I'm getting. I, mean, I don't feel like that's what right. I think it's either right. Well, that's part of it. Okay. But, and, and the, and the real question is, does the high, does the middle school actually need to occur finished out on 27, 28? Or is it actually a little bit further out? Because if you're shifting lines, if you're moving stuff around, you, you can postpone that day of that spend by maybe four or six years. And and in doing so, you know, we've, 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 we've kind of held it off and, and we're, we're better prepared to help have do more pay as you go possibly we can look at funding how we do that um, it helps us out with the renovations and things that you need as well so there's there's other things that play into the funding of, of all of there's this, a, uh, does the board of commissioners prefer a pay as you go plan we have but we can I mean some projects well, you don't know can. that's where right. if we get some real numbers and we can understand the financials okay well this is what we got we, we can do a little more better financial planning then at that point Bob's point we know we can buy four more years or whatever, then we can sit down and, and discuss as board members, okay, and get, what's that do with our financial options? Okay. I mean, I, I think historically, 
we are a pay-as-you-go kind of county, and that's that's both from our facilities to you know we just like to do that. And um, the other thing I would request is the the maintenance. You know, again, communicating what the twenty twenty one million whatever that number is. Like, here's not not to the level of detail that the engineering firm provided, but you know, we need this much for you know HVAC upgrades and you, you know something that is tangible. Got it. Yeah, yeah. that study that breaks. I, I, I don't like lump sums. Yeah. And, we, because Mr. Rawls will be happy to work on that. Got it. <laughs> just, just throw Sweet. <laughs> got nothing else to do. All right. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> what else? I guess we'll just wait to hear or someone will get back with the uh, county manager. All right, so let me, let me make sure we've got these things that you're requesting. You want to add the numbers to this capacity table with the with the renovations? As with capacity the increases, yeah. it should be reflected in the color code. Okay. Uh, possible redistricting and yeah, that would look for the middle schools. Okay. Online our online students, students not they're they're not in the school. They're just online. See how many how many and uh, any students who are in programs where they don't have to be in the school. Right. As you go online, versus bond, to um, and the twenty million dollar figure of improvements, the detailed list of what that would include. I, I, it doesn't have to be. I mean, it's going to roll up, yeah. but you know, just major categories. I think. Okay. Again, the tools to be able to sell this right. is what I'm asking for. Kelly, just quickly, did you say earlier that the not town they can choose what school they really want to? Why would I mean? Well, if the high school's got to go there, why not well, just because say... because I think what happened is, uh, in, uh, about, yeah, right. was it 10 years ago, uh -huh. when the new Moyak Middle School was built, yeah. I mean, it was a great, beautiful, brand new school, closer to parents who have to go there. Yeah. And I believe that the parents came before the board and, re or, you know, talked to the superintendent and requested that change to go. And at the time, Moyak Middle was not... Yeah, right, so you yeah. can choose which one you want. They to had that option if they worked in Virginia and they wanted to drop their child off. We gave them the option because they did come to the board and ask us to allow them to have an option instead of. Well, a lot of them, okay. just because of sports yeah. and band and sports. all of those things, it was closer for them okay. to pick them up. It was really school. about them. Okay. <laughs> so, cho choice is wonderful to us. Yeah. So, along those lines. <laughs> When mine went to Kurtuck Middle School, technically they were supposed to go to Kurtuck or uh, Moyak Middle. And we had to come back every year right. and request a consideration yeah. to continue to send them to Kurtuck. Yeah. That policy is the same, right? Yeah. You still have to do that. So, you so, that so there is no, I'm sorry? I was going to say, you live out of the Moyak district. Yeah. Okay. Because there were less kids. Anyway, uh, there, okay. there was reasoning behind it. So, um, so parents don't have an, a right to continue to send their child to whatever school they're currently going. That is correct. Right. So that would be another interesting thing to look at is how many kids should be going to Kurtuck Middle School that are under a waiver to go to Kurtuck Moyak Middle? Yeah. Very, totally. very few. Yeah. If, yeah. Very few. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not going to say none. Very few. We, we will not, we are, we review those closely okay. every year. And there has been discussion in regards to the Knott's Island about them having to drive around on those particular oh, back roads. Yeah, I know, I know. They're not the best. No, and honestly, myself, I'd rather see the kids come across the ferry. I agree. Than to go around. But that's, you know, those that chose Mayock Middle, that's the well, I just know back in the day when it was only one middle school, I mean, everybody took the ferry yes. to go around. Right. right. Inevitably, you're going to be on the ferry, so it's yeah. not a ferry issue, or you shouldn't have moved to not power right. because your kid's going to ride the ferry to school because that's, that's a given. Right. Yeah. And, and we need to, I mean, the ferry.
very has been a blessing. I mean, it was actually it did more years ago. I mean, we used to have a late five thirty run. Right. I mean, parents would love to have that run. Yeah, when I was kids. Well, when I was coaching at the middle school soccer, I remember we had kids that lived in Knott's Island, and I had to make sure they were off in time to catch that late period. Right. Right. But they were still coming over from Knott's Island to the middle school. But they've taken that run. Yes, yeah. but they have. So, yes, I understand. I was and just curious. You know, I know you all had to fight a few years back to keep that ferry. Yes. You know, so more, more, more kids on the ferry would help them even more. You know, you know. Well, that's I what we're doing. I will ask a question about the ferry. The other day, we were on the Knox Island side, and a bus came off the ferry. One child got off the bus, got on another bus waiting in Knox Island, turned around and got back on the ferry and went back across. Huh. One child. These are the challenges that we face. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I cannot go into details, of, uh, but there, there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are required to meet the individual needs of students um, as required by law that requires us to do things like you witnessed and we try to be as efficient with it as we possibly can be it's in their IEP they have to uh, got it. I know my last year superintendent in Johnston County we had five students who all had individual nurses yeah. and the individual bus Well, I don't have any other questions. I don't think I have more to do, or I guess we got a good uh, understanding. Where I, I have a real quick question. Kate, you said the Board of Education meeting is next week? It's 13th. 13th, week after next, yeah. What's that? April 13th. April 13th. Okay, I think on your website it's the third Thursday of the month. We have spring break the third Thursday. This meeting was moved and put out there a long time ago. We put this on early. We're going to stick with this date. Okay, can you make sure that the calendar is reflected correctly on the county site? Okay. Is it? Okay. Well, thank you for your hospitality and being nice to a stranger. Thank, you. <laughs> thank everyone for uh, a nice meeting. Yes, thank you for being here. Everyone drive safe. And at this time, I would like to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.